Um, let's get into the topic tonight because I, I was really um, excited about a couple things and I want to dive into things a little bit. Um, I was fortunate enough to remember today that I had a uh, meeting or a uh, uh, an event with GMC today with a business financial thing. So typically what happens in our business is we do press conferences for new vehicle launches. And then typically they do like a financial analyst kind of meeting with reporters who cover that segment. And then we're not always invited. And I was so excited to be at this event because I learned so much stuff. Oh my goodness. No, he was like live, like tweeting me. <laughs> I know. People I live like, direct messaging me while and, the meeting is going on. He's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And and I will tell you, um, I, I, I don't I don't want to throw too much shade at my my colleagues, but they were kept asking about this EV news. So so General Motors today announced that they're going to build the Hummer SUT. I, it's I think it's SUT. It's, it's the SUV version of the Hummer. Yeah yeah yeah. But I think they call it SUT or something weird. Um. Anyways, they uh they were going to do that, and they announced this thing, and that they're going to do a factory zero and all this kind of stuff going. What's going on with that? And I was like, you know what? Uh, who cares about? I, I just didn't care. I wanted to know more about the stuff going on because they also announced. And, and I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna play some video. I just need to open my thing. Um, because I thought a couple things were really standing out to me, and I'm surprised that my I'm not surprised my colleagues didn't pick this up. But um, yeah, I want to see if I can't make this a little bigger. So um, I want a, a couple things to, to take note. Uh, gallery. Okay. So I don't know if it's gonna show any bigger. We'll try. I'm going to try to make it as big as I can. This so there was a is a recap of 2022 in GMC, and so Duncan Alfred, who's the general GMC vice president, so GMC's got vice president Buick, and everybody's got vice president. Anyways, uh, and you gotta you gotta. I'm sorry for the quality. I was literally grabbing my phone, like Jill said, I was like sending her all sorts of stuff. <laughs> but a couple things to, to look at this is the first is right in the middle that really stands out to me. The highest ATPs ever. So what is an ATP? ATP is an average transaction price. And that's how much average vehicles are selling for in GMC brand overall. And it was up 30% versus the industry at $59,111. And he said early, later on in the video that the Sierra was like $64,000 was the average transaction price and was the highest transaction price they've ever seen. And he was really proud of this fact. And I was thinking to myself, like, all right, if if I'm Duncan, and I'm thinking, hey, people love my brand. They're buying the highest trim stuff. I'm excited for the business. We're making lots of money. And this is what financial analysts want to hear. I'm also thinking about our audience. And I'm thinking about the audience who complains about how expensive trucks are. And here is GMC boasting, boosting, or boasting, excuse me, boosting, boasting both about how expensive their vehicles are. And I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's probably not you know, what they thought was going to come off of that. But yeah, they, they're like, you know what? And and the other thing is, there's a Yukon in this photo too. There's a, a if you guys listen to the podcast, um, there is a Sierra 1500 that goes left to right. Sierra 1500. It looks like, a, I think it's a new GMC Canyon, the Sierra mm -hmm. Heavy Duty, the GMC Hummer, the Yukon, the Acadia, and the train. Train and mm -hmm. Acadia, I might mess those up. Anyways. Yeah, the um, train is going to be a smaller one. And then I think the Acadia is the one on the end. I think so too. Yeah, you're right. Um, He was, he, he, Kind of later on set, I don't know if I have, I, I, don't, I don't know what's in my deck here. I'm, I'm going to scroll through a little bit. And, um, and by the way, for, for future reference, Tim, you know you can do a screen grab of this instead of taking a picture of it with your. Yeah, I actually, I, I record some video too. It looks pretty crappy, but I recorded it anyways. And uh, I was thinking about, I should have recorded this whole damn thing because I was really intrigued. Uh, UConn and UConn Excel. This is fascinating. UConn and UConn Excel. Duncan said, look, he goes, we literally, you, you can't buy this thing. He goes, I get my cousin's brother's girlfriend's fiance, sister's brother-in-law who reaches out to me. And he's like, you can't buy it. He goes, our average time on lot with Yukon and Yukon XL is seven days. That means it gets unloaded from the truck and they're just waiting for the customers to come over and pick it up. Like you, you, you can't buy it. Not going to happen. And I was like, wow. So that was another, I was going to do a story like the vehicle you can't buy is, you know, not your latest EV craze, folks. No, it's Yukon XL. Um, and the Canyon has best years in 2019, which I think is really interesting. And Train has a pretty good year too. Um, and this yes, that's portfolio. Uh, I don't know what this one. Is. Let me let me let me go to this one. I was gonna play this. He's got one. Uh, yeah. So this there's another graphic that shows that Sierra Light Duty and Heavy Duty combined has the best share ever. It's fifth year consecutive year of share growth. So what does this mean? This means it's market share. How much of the 
truck market does GMC occupy? And it's interesting because he pointed out that, you know, Chevy had a pretty good year as well and GMC had a good year, but they basically took this market share from Ram and Ford because GMC is now more of a luxury brand, a more premium, I should say. They, they, they don't like to use the word luxury, but it, more premium. And then, um, oh, that's a movie. I don't know what he says in this movie. So we can, let, yeah, let's watch Duncan here talk about, which one is it? Oh, it's this. This one we get to. This is the GMC average transaction price outperforming the industry. I'm going to play this video because it's, again, I apologize. It's crappy video, but just listen. Average transaction price is average price paid by individual uh, brand. This is taken from JD Power uh, pin. And as you can see there, Land Rover, number one, Mercedes Benz, two. Denali is a sub brand, three. And you might say, ah, oh, well, you know, anyone could do that. Just pick the top trim level. Well, just to put it in perspective, Denali sells, sold 125,000 retail sales in the U.S. last year. So that's nearly double uh, Land Rover, Range Rover. Um, it's more than Jaguar. Um, it's more than Lincoln. It's more than um, Genesis. It's more than Volvo, more than Infinity. So you, you begin to get the picture here. Very high uh price paid uh, and a significant volume yeah so people are eating up gmc like like no other and you can see there's one more chart here in the, what they call this deck and i uh, will play it 10 seconds um it's basically continued growth heavy sierra heavy duty um what i've talked to him about in the past because i've met duncan in person we talked about stuff is that the denali trim is what people go to gmc for people aren't really going to gmc for an sle or slt even though the this chart shows that the sales are up in those segments. It's really Denali driving the, driving the, the bus. The, the price point at the top, and you can see we've grown uh, in each and every one. But we've had the most growth at the, the top the top end of this segment. And this is so the top end of the segment. So for those on the podcast, I'm pointing to it. I'm not pointing, but I'm on my I'm pointing to it on myself. You can't see the camera, <laughs> but I'm pointing to the top right thing, and it says the eighty two thousand price point of the Sierra Denali. In the heavy duty has increased the most 36 percent increase versus like a 16 percent increase or 16 percent of the i guess their their, their share or the, the number of vehicles they sold has gone up more than double 16 to 30 36 percent of denali's so they are selling the heck out of denali's and so a couple other notes um the average transaction price for the trucks was sixty thousand for the year last year in the fourth quarter, 64000 and they're basically into the luxury space. Uh, they at, were able to increase production. And that's really fascinating, too, because they opened up Oshawa. So Oshawa is a truck plant in Canada. My dad actually, my dad actually would go there. Uh, the truck plant in Canada reopened. And what that allowed them to do was shuffle some production. And so they can build more GMCs and Chevy as well because they were able to move some production around. And there's one more thing. Oh, that was all the uh, the Hummer EV. So the Hummer EV, Hummer SUT EV, whatever. Uh, production starts today, ramps up, second half of the year. But he also made the point, somebody asked about, um, somebody, somebody, one of the journalists asked about what's the, what's the problem? It's still part supply, whatever's going on for EVs. And he goes, look, he goes, really, the challenge with EVs is with the Hummer, you basically are using two batteries, <laughs> because the thing is so massive and so they're playing games as far as you can build like one Silverado EV or two Silverado for a Hummer you build because they have to use so much battery technology to put into the, the EVs and that's what and they have 90,000 reservations of Hummer EV SUVs and they actually had to close down ordering because that's so much demand yeah that's going to take them at least two years to fulfill well, what what do we you and I talked about this before? Didn't they sell like twelve hundred Hummers last year in total? And so if they and they're basically building like what's that a hundred a month is kind of what it works out to be. Yeah. So I'm like, if you have the ninetieth thousand ninety thousand ticket, I got the ninety thousand <laughs> ticket, right? You are screwed. <laughs> like you are screwed. <laughs> I just was like, I I don't know. I was kind of blown away by that details because I thought that man. So, GM, so, you know, we have, what do we have right now? We have a really screwed up economy, but we have oil companies with record profits. We have GMC selling record transaction prices. And so we have people just, I mean, the money is just crazy. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. People are just spending it. Yeah. Well, with the average transaction price of a car, 
or I guess I should say a new vehicle, which encompasses cars and trucks is $49,000. Yeah. So that goes yeah. from everything from like your base um, Hyundai Elantra all the way up to, you know, your $100,000 uh, Land Rover. But but I, I think it's crazy. The average like the average transaction price. I mean, just think about that for a second. The average transaction price for a new car is forty nine thousand dollars. And well, and the thing to keep in mind, too, is that is all of the vehicles. That's a twenty thousand dollar vehicle. To a six thousand dollar vehicle, I mean that's the average, and the same mm-hmm. thing with GMC too. Like they sell GMC sells some smaller or some smaller price point vehicles, but I mean sixty four thousand dollars is walking a lot. Yeah. Well, here here's the fun fact I learned today. Mm-hmm. So in in another life, I, I do um, a, a another podcast with um, Tom Appel of Consumer Guide Automotive. It's called the Car Stuff Podcast gratuitous uh, self-promotion right there I feel like i'm just hearing this for the first time ever yeah i, don't I know, know Shh, like... don't tell tim i'm cheating on him with tom appel um but uh we the, the we were talking today and the quiz w- the, at the end of the podcast was about forty thousand dollars like can you get x car for under or over forty thousand dollars so the fun fact that i learned is in theory you could get a gmc uh, Sierra with a regular cab and a short bed for $37,000. In theory, not that that's actually available, but in theory, you could get a GMC Sierra for less than $40,000. Yeah. And I was like, huh. But yeah. I don't think you can get an Acura TLX for less than $40,000. It's like really a weird thing. It, 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 it is. It's, it's a very weird market. And uh, BJ has his diesel at his dealership since mid-December and he's a whole new engine. Man, I'm sorry. That sucks. Just bad luck. Um, but I, I, speaking of engines, if I were to segue to that transition, track, transition. Um, I'm going to share the story. And uh, I did I was I didn't get a chance to write this up because I was going to talk about this, but I was on vacation. I thought it was really interesting, this story. So GM inv- to invest. $918 million in new V8 gas engines and EV components. See, there's my journalist friends. Got to get the EV component dig in there, right? So, oh, let me uh, let me close. And Jill and I kind of risk springs of this, but again, we can't get busy. Uh, GM General Motors plans to invest nearly $1 billion in four U.S. plants to support production of components for EV vehicles and its next generation of V8 engines. Isn't that such a weird thing to put together? Like, you know, uh, even, even Duncan said, he goes, you know, he, today he's like you know i know mary has talked about gm's going to be ev only in the future but he says look he goes we can't get a heavy duty ev to work like it's just not going to happen and those people need to tow tow long distances so it's just not going to happen and so yeah so and even in, in the the mike wayland story here the third highlight is gm has said its plans offers an exclusively electric electric powered lineup by 2035 so i'm like sitting here thinking in myself thinking it's 2023 so 2020 30, 35, I'm not great at math. What was that? 11, 12 years? 12 years. 12 years. So they're going to invest a billion dollars to build another generation of V8 engines to only last 12 years. And that money is money that they are not spending on building a battery that can tow and haul. Yeah, well, and, and as we talked about a few live streams ago, I did that story from Auto News saying that they had met a chemical plateau. They can't make... They're working on different packaging for batteries. Like they put in a silo instead of being flat, they get more range out of that. I mean, so it's interesting. So uh, they're going to build a next generation of V8 engines. What's I think really interesting is I think that V8 next generation has got to have some sort of uh, a hybrid component to it. Um, it just has to. Um, but yeah, so it's conflicting signs here from General Motors, I should say. So it's going to have another V8. They're going to bring it out. They're also in the story. I think Mike brought it up and. Um, by the way, I really respect Mike's work, so I'm not, I'm not digging on Mike at all. I really respect his work. But he, he said something in here about the diesel. Uh, yeah, I guess it, maybe not there, but I read a story talking about they're going to keep that three-liter inline diesel because they really still do believe in that diesel quite a bit. So, yeah, so General Motors, on one hand, Mary's like, we're going to go EV only. And on the other hand, they're going to invest mi- billions in V8s. And they're going to keep the three-liter diesel, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense in the grand scheme of EV world. But I just... It's such interesting. I don't so know. I, I, I would like the clarification there. They're going to be 100% EV by 2035 for passenger vehicles, 
for um, everything except for their trucks for like, what, what, what does that mean? Because, you know, until battery technology is such that you can tow and haul for long distances or the infrastructure is set up that there is a charging station every 20 miles that will add, you know, 500 miles of range, <laughs> yeah. you know, in 10 minutes or less. Um, like, I, I don't see how people are going to be able to make the switch if they need to tow or haul for long distances. Yeah. I, it, and it's such a, it's always an irony with General Motors in that they keep pushing out EVs, but then it's like, wait a minute, they have to sell trucks and SUVs to pay the bills for EVs. And by the way, in the chat, Todd, Todd Dombrowski <laughs> has got this thing going on. So apparently, I'm going to wear my hat on backwards we get 50 likes. And Jill's going to wear a hat for two minutes if we get 75 likes. So I don't know, Jill, if you got a hat in the... I, you know what? If we get 70, if we get 100 likes, I will give you the choice of hats that I wear for the remainder of the show. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. No, I... Because I, I actually have. I have... I mean, not a huge selection here in this office, but as you can see, I have a floppy hat behind me here, and then I have some baseball hats. I have the pickup truck plus SUV truck hat over there. I have some beanies. I have like some, so I will give you a selection of hats if we hit 100 likes. Yeah. By the way, Todd, you're going to have to let us know because I actually don't, can't see the likes on this system we're using. So maybe you can, Jill can find it too. I know. Uh, I'm like, I wonder if I can look on the YouTube uh, channel on my phone. You do that. I'm going to pull up Bob B's comment because I think it's interesting. So Bob B says the top brass has things that big investors want to hear. And also trust. Um, you need to talk to head engineers to actually figure out all the truth. If you can get them to admit that. Very funny thing happened. And I'll give you a little behind the scenes. So I was doing a, uh, we are at 52. Our, Jill's going to confirm that we're at 52. Todd says we're at 52. Um, a very funny thing happened where I get to I got to go up to Todd's comment. I think I got to wear my hat backwards for two minutes, something like that. Uh, Tim wore his hat backwards for two minutes. Okay. Um, anyways, a very funny thing happened, Bob, in that interview where um, they kind of people are like, "Well, why didn't you make the Colorado? We we're doing the Chevy Colorado launch. Why? Why didn't you guys make that EV EV component?" And uh, the the head engineer for the Colorado at the time was he said, look, he says, uh, we don't, you know, we know that we have a, a a big EV push within the company, but our ICE vehicles are still really good as well. And so, you know, we still want to have lots of um, energy around our ICE vehicles. Which ICE is the internal combustion engine. It's a new terminology for stuff these days. Things have changed so much, but so they still they have such a big range of gas and diesel engines. He's like, you know, I know we talk a lot of EVs, you guys. I know you guys see a lot of press release EVs, but he goes, in this case, we didn't need it. 